I want to talk about meningitis for a couple of reasons. Firstly, meningitis can be a life-threatening illness. And so we need to understand the illness. We need to understand how it spreads and how it is that we can prevent meningitis in order to save lives. Secondly, in some parts of the world, meningitis can be absolutely devastating. There's what, what we call the meningitis belt in sub-Saharan Africa. And if you're interested in global health, this is a serious issue that you really need to know and understand because it's an area where there's absolutely an opportunity to intervene and save lives. It's also an important public health topic because firstly, there's a lot we can do to prevent meningitis through vaccine programs. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. There's a lot we can do to treat people that have meningitis. If there's a case of meningitis, there are things, and it depends on the causative agent, of course, but there are things that we can do to help that person. And we can prevent the spread of meningitis to other people. So it's a real public health issue. But before we carry on, welcome back to this Global Health YouTube channel. My name is Greg Martin. If you like the content in this video, then subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, you'll get notified of future similar videos. Let's carry on. Boyoshaka. Now, what is meningitis? Meningitis is really the inflammation of the, the membrane that covers the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, and it's mostly caused by an infective agent or a microbiological pathogen. And this can be bacteria, viruses, fungi, or parasites. The most common causes of meningitis are bacteria and viruses, and bacteria tend to cause more serious illness than viruses. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is vaccination programs. Vaccines are incredibly effective in terms of preventing meningitis. They save lives. They're absolutely amazing. The world without vaccines would be a very, very different place. And just so that you know, this channel is sponsored by Nested Knowledge. That's a platform that supports systematic literature review and meta-analysis. They're absolutely amazing. Check out the link in the description below. And with that, on with the lesson. I get annoyed and I would say more than annoyed. I would say that I get angry when I see these campaigns on YouTube and these people standing up saying, oh, I'm proud to come from a vaccine-free family and we don't believe back in vaccines and vaccines harm you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, of course, anything you take may have a side effect, right? And, and we, we understand that. But the sheer, the millions of people that have been saved because of vaccine programs, do you know anybody that has died of smallpox? No, of course you don't. We've eradicated smallpox with an effective vaccine campaign. By the way, Last century, the century during which we eradicated smallpox, right? Three quarters of the way through the century, they, they, we completely eradicated it and there wasn't any left. During that century alone, 300 million people died of smallpox. 700 million people that didn't die were severely disfigured because of it, right? Uh, do you know anybody in your family or friends that has died because of polio disease or being disfigured or maimed because of it? Uh, not disfigured, but, you know, kind of paralyzed because of polio. No, you don't know anyone because we just don't see that anymore. And we are working toward a world in which polio will be eradicated. I mean, it's a little bit more tricky and it's a difficult thing. And I'll make a video about that sometime. But the point is, vaccines are incredibly effective. And we should really make sure that we ourselves and our family members get vaccinated. So what vaccines are there that can protect against meningitis? Well, first of all, there's the meningococcal vaccine that protects against Neisseria meningitidis. That's the most common bacterial cause of meningitis. There's also the pneumococcal vaccine, right? And that protects against streptococcal pneumonia, which is a cause of bacterial meningitis, another common cause. And there's Haemophilus influenza type B, and, before the, and that's a bacterial infection. And before the introduction of the vaccine program, that was one of the leading causes of death amongst young children from, from, from meningitis. And let's not forget about the good old mumps, measles, and rubella, MMR, right? This is a vaccine that most kids get nowadays. And the MMR, these, all three of these bugs can in fact cause meningitis. So by getting the MMR, you are in fact protecting against meningitis. Okay, so other than vaccination programs, and of course, strengthening those programs, right? What are the other things that we can do to prevent meningitis? In the event of a case of meningitis, right, there are things that we can do to prevent the onward spread of meningitis. Okay, let me just say, and this goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. If you're interested in global health, then Global Health 101 is an absolute must read. I use this book all of the time. The author, Richard Skolnick, has got great insights. His writing is extremely accessible. He's got years of experience teaching global health. Highly recommend you buy this book. Click on the link in the description below. Okay, let's get on with the video. When there's a case of meningitis, our number one priority is to ensure that care and treatment is is provided to the case themselves. Okay, like let's assume that that's done and that's spoken for. Then we need to think about their close contacts and where they might have been and who is who may have been at risk 
And depending on the causative organism, there's different things that we can do, but we can, we can offer prophylactic antibiotics at times. Some of the times we may suspect that people, close contacts, may be colonized by the same bug. They might not be sick, but they may in actual fact have that, that microbe uh, in, in and around them. We can provide uh, antibiotics for that. We can offer uh, vaccination programs. We can vaccine, vaccinate around the, around the person. So there are things that we can do. Public health officials can step in and, and, and intervene and prevent the onward transmission of the bugs that cause meningitis in the event of a case. There are also things that we can do to address the circumstances that promote the spread of some of the microbes that cause meningitis. So for example, addressing overcrowding. We know that, and this is, you know, we often talk about poverty and some of the social determinants of health. This is a great example of that. And so the solution isn't always medical, sometimes it's social, right? We need to address things like poverty and overcrowding. That goes a long way to addressing the incidence and prevalence of something like meningitis. As well as overcrowding, we know that things like uh, dry and dusty conditions, and we actually, we also think that climate change may in fact impact on the spread of meningitis because temperature and precipitation impact on transmission dynamics, right? So there's a lot that we need to think about in terms of dealing with this at an individual level, of course, then at a community level, and then at a global level as well. And finally, we need to talk about surveillance, right? Both in terms of disease trends and the geographic distribution of the disease, but also in terms of the trend of antimicrobial resistance, which is going to be a huge challenge in the future. Now, stay and watch another video. And if this is your first time on this channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Don't do drugs or do your best. Don't ever change. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.